But what's really unique is, is when we started talking about the insurance issues, your, your city council members started calling and they're involved. So they can't really have a direct impact, but when they start pushing on us, it gets us to move a little faster. So I'm really impressed that they're here also. And I appreciate Councilman Ballin, Skidmore, and Mr. Thomas, that they're excellent community servants and I appreciate them being here. Now, I am not going to butcher names that I just met. So I'm going to kind of let these guys introduce themselves, but let me tell you how we got here. I reached out a couple of uh, weeks ago or about a month ago and said, what do you think? Because we've got some major issues. And our issues here in Orange County are completely different than other places in the state. And we have similar issues, but we do have different issues because number one, we're one of the top tourist des destinations in the country. And number two, people love to move here. And in that they're moving here, they're building condos. And I believe we're number one or number two with HOAs in the country, it feels like. But I know we're in South Carolina, we're even number one and number two. And I think most of you, by a show of hands, how many of you here in relationship to a HOA situation. Welcome to South Carolina. So if I had to follow that up with a question, how many of you are here of a 100 to 200% increase on your rate? Believe, believe me, I saw the same thing when I opened my premium. Hi, my name is Thea. I'm in Edgewater, in Barracuda. I owned since 2005. Our premiums have gone up 700%. Yes. We have been extorted to say flood insurance, which we don't need. I grew up on Long Island, so I know. I bought here. I could have bought on the water if I wanted to, do, to have that risk. What I want to know is what are our elected officials planning on doing? We shouldn't be, we shouldn't be subject to just having to deal with it. This has been going on for a while. Right, and I, and I appreciate the question. But as I said when we first got here, in the meeting we had last night, the meeting we're having right now, are the first meetings that this state has had. Yeah, but you have known about this for years. Uh, hold on one moment. When did you get the notification for your increase? We, we've been fighting for two years. Okay, so, so let me tell you the way that this process works, but I don't like the way that, that the government works for these kind of processes. We have 124 people in the House of Representatives, okay? So we have to come up with ideas. And when we come up with ideas, we get them from these kind of meetings, and we establish a game plan. And when we get our proper game plan, we go and we try to sell it to 124 individuals so we can get a majority of those votes to get legislation. If we don't have a good game plan, the people in Aiken and the people in York and those places that don't have the same issues as Ori County, we won't have them on our team. So it's going to be a process and it's going to be painful, but at least the guys that you see in this room that are elected officials are here working with these guys who don't have to be here trying to come up with a solution that will help all of us. So and, and I don't... What are your ideas? My ideas are a couple of things. First, first of all, I think in the long run, we legislate things that have unintended consequences. I mean, we've got things occurring on the ocean front. We've got properties where we draw critical lines, and there's awful good reasons. It's conservation. We're worried about the coast, and we're worried about the turtles, and all these things that we've got to be worried about. But when we change these critical lines, we go in and tell people who no longer have seawalls because the storm's in it, that they can't put it back. So now we're putting the risk on the insurance company because we're trying to do something good for the environment. But we're putting the insurance company paying for this house that's going to fall in the ocean because we're saving the environment. It's not the homeowner's fault because we allowed them to do that in the first place. So we legislate things that cause unintended consequences. And we've got to stop doing that. We've got to start thinking about the decisions we make and figure out how it's going to impact the people back home. Even though it sounds good, we need to think about what it's going to do back home, and we don't do that very well. And that's my idea. Now, we're going to have a committee that comes through. We're going to have some hearings. We're going to bring these guys back. We're going to try to bring some insurance companies in. We're going to have them under oath. We're going to have some of you under oath. And we're going to have hearings, and we're going to record them. We're going to make them available to the public.
and we're going to try to have them up and down the coast. And we're going to build that coalition. And when these guys tell us those are good ideas, they'll work, then we'll try to get them passed. And that's the way the process works. Hello, I'm Larry Adams. I'm from the Palm Lakes Garden Homes HOA. I'm one of the board members. All I've heard about is insurance company money. Money, money, money for them. Take a look around. It's all white hairs. All right? We're older. Worse, worse. What about our money? You talk about your money. Come on. You want, you want to dump a 100% increase on, on an HOA that has little ladies and people that have mortgages on their places that are going to have to pay an assessment in three installments that they want. Boom, 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 right now. The insurance company doesn't care. What about these people that have to shell out the money? What is it going to come from from them? Most of us are on uh, uh, fixed incomes of some type. Where does our money come from? You say, put a roof on. Oh, wow, put a roof on. $15,000. Maybe you have $15,000. How many people out here have $15,000 to dump? Did it, was it worth $15,000 to get your insurance a little bit lower for that year? I, you know, not everybody has the box. I happen to, my personal thing is I happen to be a little bit good. But why should I, why should I pay it to an insurance company? I mean, to go 100% increase in one year? What do we get? Who are we paying for? Are we paying for all the people around the world? Do the people around the world pay for us? No. Yeah. Let's talk about our money. Where's our money coming from? Do we get an increase? Uh, do we, are we going to get a big increase in our, what we get? No. We get a little increase and it takes it away for something else or Medicare or whatever else. I'm worried about my people that, that live in my community. What are you going to do? And, and you people over there, the, what, the council and senators or whoever you are, what are you going to do when people can't pay? What are you going to do when they have to walk out and you get foreclosures? This is going to be a ghost town. Think about it. The businesses are going to suffer. Everybody is going to suffer. Why? Why? Right now, if because of this, if I wanted to try to sell my property, I couldn't do it. Who in their right mind would come in and pay a mortgage? Okay, pay a mortgage and then pay an assessment and an HOA fee that's more than their mortgage. Nobody in their right mind that I know, unless they really want to spend the money, okay? I'm gonna throw the money away, that's, I guess that's okay, but think about it. Hi, can you hear me okay? Hi, my name is Denise Westney Richardson. I'm the president of the Waipani Homeowners Association. Um, first of all, I want to thank you all for joining us tonight. I know we're probably not the most friendly audience, um, but I also want to thank everybody in this room. Um, it's obvious we're all in this together, and to see such a big turnout is, um, it's, it's just really nice to see, because I think this is going to be a long haul for all of us. Um, so here's my question, and I'll give you some background. Um, we budgeted at Waipani 40% more for insurance this year. Um, at the end of the day, our cost ended up being four times what we budgeted. And we were told we were lucky. As the months were leading up to our renewal, we were told by our agent that we may not be able to get insurance. Um, and if we did, we'd have to go through the South Carolina Wind Hill Underwriters Group, and we would be close to seven or eight times what we budgeted. 
So we considered ourselves lucky to be four times over budget. Um, here's the thing, as we were hearing we were we maybe couldn't get insured, you know, we started talking to other insurance agents thinking this can't be right, you know, somebody's not giving us the right information. Um, these other agents we talked to were unable to even look for other options for us because, and, and you may not all know this, but when you work with an agent, they actually lock your account. So any company they are partnered with, any underwriters, um, no one else, as long as you have them as your agent of record, no one else can search on your behalf. So, you know, we're told to shop the market, but how can we shop the market when these agencies are allowed to lock in your account? and then not provide you with a renewal option until three days before um, your policy expires, which is what happened to us. You know, that took our cost, it almost doubled our budget, and it took our insurance costs to be about two thirds of our entire budget. So think about that, if you make 100,000 a year, imagine if you know, 60, 70,000 of that income that you make goes strictly to insurance. Um, and that's the situation we're in now. I know everyone could probably contribute to every situation here because we're all in the same boat. And I appreciate your effort to try to straighten out the question. But in the, in the interest of making sure we keep this orderly, if you want to have an input, get, make sure you're in line and let the person at the mic handle the question. As far as the question of whether or not that can be required, that currently is not required by statute. Um, so I would encourage you to talk to somebody about sexual change. We're happy to have that conversation in the legislature. I'll say one other thing. If you if you don't if you think you're getting locked out, you can give your agent you can give your agent authority to another I mean your authority to another agent to represent you can pass that on. But I'm not I don't I don't want you to expect a different answer from the second agent. Martin and I, uh, the president of the HOA right next door here, Ocean Green. Um, I have a few questions, but I'm going to, I'm going to tie up everybody's time. Um, I'm sure everybody in this room got the same raise as pretty much everybody between 100% and 300%. Now, here's my question. Uh, our HOA got, was supposed to have a 30-day notice, right, you know, to the increase. We got a five-day. I heard there was... I'm talking to other HOAs around the area in North Myrtle Beach. They got three days notice for a 300% increase. And if you guys are, whoever's regulating them, is supposed to follow the rules. They're not following the rules. The, the rules are whatever they say they are. You just answered that gentleman's question. The rules are whatever they say the rules are. And that it can't be that way. I mean, I got a folder here where uh, the particular insurance company that we have, Use, is, uses independent um, adjusters. They're charging, well, we had a little incident, they're charging $653 for a $189 toilet and $253 to put it in and out. And then when I questioned the lady from the insurance company, I don't want to be smirched them here, but she said, oh, I never had anybody fight for the insurance company. And I turned around to her and said, listen, ladies, I'm not fighting for you. We all got to pay the, we all got to pay the freight. Because they won't even litigate against these companies. They just accept whatever they give as a bill, and then they pass it on to everybody in this room. So I hope you guys can do something about that. At least follow the regulations that you have in place. Good. All right, first, a point of clarification, if you would, Mr. Director. You said that there was like a second tier of companies that are totally unregulated in the state. How does that happen, that you get people involved in something like this and they're totally unregulated? Everything my entire life has always been regulated. Yet I find out that many HOAs are buying from that second tier because those are the major providers. 
for HOAs. And no one regulates them. In fact, you can't do anything with them based on what I'm hearing. Correct? Yes, I can get into some of the technical parts of that. But So the way the surplus lines companies work is they are regulated by their domestic state. So every, sta every insurance company operating or based in the U.S. has a domestic state. So we have domestic um, carriers here and then other states do too. And so they're regulated by their domestic regulator, but not by any of the other states that they operate in. And they are intended to be more flexible. So with a, an admitted carrier, they would file their forms with us before they could offer a, a policy form in the state. And we would approve it or not approve it. And based on statute. And so they, the surplus lines carriers don't have to do that. So what they typically do is they will tailor that policy, that coverage form, to the individual risk. So if they might not have to tailor it too much, but they are able to do that and it does provide some flexibility. It's intended to be um, a, a release valve, if you will, to provide some coverage when maybe a traditional carrier wouldn't be willing to. And it, it can serve as a gap between the traditional carrier and that, our wind pool of the market of last resort. So we don't have any, we have no means of actually getting these folks to do anything. They can basically do what they want to do. We can communicate with them, but that, but. They can basically do what they want to do. Simple question, yes or no? They can to a degree. Okay, thank you very much. I thank appreciate you. It.